Now, so we continue the lecture of engineering plastics following the first part of engineering plastic. Let us start with polycarbonate, so-called PC. Polycarbonate has been synthesized by two different methods. The first method is interfacial reactions. The other method is metal reactions. In the interfacial reactions, bisphenol A is reacted with phosphorens to produce polycarbonate with the removal of hydrogen chloride. The interfacial reaction is the, the interfacial reactions takes place at the interface between aqueous phase, that is, BPA is dissolved in sodium hydroxide the aqueous solution, and organic phase, that is, phosphorin is dissolved in chlorinated solvent. In this interfacial reactions, amine catalyst has been used, more specifically, trialkyl amine or pyridines as the catalyst to trap hydrogen chloride as byproduct. The melt reaction is a condensation reaction between bisphenol A and diphenyl carbonate here. So with removal of a phenol here, in this melt reaction, catalyst is not necessary. And therefore, just the continuous stirring and reduce the pressure for effective removal of a phenol are required. The melt reaction is commercially available, and the industries, most of the industry use the melt reactions. So particularly, BPA-based polycarbonate has many good properties, such as high glass transition temperatures, 145 degrees centigrade. That is much higher than glass transition temperatures of PET or PVT. So PC has excellent impact strength, excellent transparencies, frame retardancies, and excellent thermal stability, high tensile modulus, excellent stress relaxations, and PC shows good moisture resistance. And therefore, the PC has been used for many applications, such as automotive, uh, automotive lighting here, this cover for automotive headlight, and this is bottles for mineral acid. And here, the architectural looping is made of PC. Also, this cover for high-intensity LED lighting. And this CD is made of PC. And also, PC has been applied for medical devices, such as a goggle, and it's a test tube, et cetera. So in order to improve heat resistance of polycarbonate, so we may replace bisphenol A with more bulky or sterically hindered monomers. Now, it says R is bisphenol A, that is BPA-based polycarbonate, which is widely used as most common. And R is replaced by one. One is a tetrametal bisphenol A. And then the glass transition temperature is 207 degrees centigrade which is higher than the BPA-based polycarbonate, that is 100, 145 degrees centigrade. Now, so R is replaced by 2. This is tetramethyl bisphenol S. And then the glass transition temperature of the PC is 260 degrees centigrade, which is much higher than BPA-based polycarbonate TZ. And particularly now, this one, this uh, monomer is replaced R, and then the carbonate shows very high glass transition temperatures of 290 degrees centigrade. Now, as I mentioned just before, polycarbonate has excellent in the impact strength. However, in order to further increase the impact strength of polycarbonate, so you may use polydimethyl siloxane. So polydimethyl siloxane is dimethyl siloxane. This is polydimethyl siloxane. It's recognized for its stability and flexibility and is commonly used in, in medical applications. And there are two methods to improve impact strength of polycarbonate. One method is a simple blending of polycarbonate and polydimethyl siloxane. 
Simple polydimethyl silox and polycarbonate blends have been known to show excellent impactor strengths. Another method to improve impactor strengths of polycarbonate is to use block copolymerization method. The block copolymers of PC and the PDMS, polydimethyl siloxanes, are synthesized from suitably and capped polydimethyl siloxane precursors. Indeed, savvy innovative plastics company commercialized the block copolymer of polycarbonate and polydimethyl siloxane under the trade name of Lexan EXL. This Lexan EXL is known to show superior impact strengths. Now let's move on ketone-based thermoplastics. Polyaryl ether ketones is simplified by PAEKs, are highly aromatic, and most semi-crystalline thermoplastics. Several examples of ketone-based thermoplastics are PEEEK, PEEK, PEEK, -K, et cetera. Now, so when you look at this uh, figure, these chemical structures is named as ether, ether, ether ketone. Therefore, this polymer is named as polyether, ether, ether ketones, which is abbreviated by PEEEK. Now, when you look at this chemical structure, ether, ether ketones, therefore, this polymer is named as polyether, ether ketone, that is abbreviated by PEEK, just we call the peak. What about these chemical structures? Ether, ether, ketone, ether, ketone. And therefore, this polymer is abbreviated by P-E-E-K-E-K. -E -E -K. Now, this is a simple one, polyether ketones, P-E-K, just a pack, right? So ether, ether, ketone, ketone, so P-E-E-K-K, -E -E ether, ketone, ether, ketone, ketone, so that this is named as P-E-K-E-K-K, -E -K -K. Here's P E K K P E K K K, right? Among this, polyether ether ketone here, so called peak or a peak P E K, is most widely used. It's been commercialized. So, so let's look at the synthesis of polyether ether ketone peak. This peak is has been synthesized by reacting difluorobenzophenones with hydroquinones in the presence of alkali carbonate as a catalyst in a polar aprotic solvent. And this is a chemical structure of polyether ether ketone here. Right? So sometimes we may use new catalysts, for example, N-alkyl, N-prime, N-prime, dialkyl aminopyridine. When you use this new catalyst, so we may achieve not only high molecular weight, but also high reaction rate. So this table compares the thermal properties of polyether ketones. This is a polyether ketone, so that this is simplified by PEK, ether ether ketone, the peak, ether ketone ketone, PEKK, this ether ether ketone ketones, PEKK. Here's it by phenyl unit. Here's we cannot name of this uh, polymers. Now when you compare the thermal properties. More specifically, glass transition temperatures and melting temperatures, you may realize that this ether content here is 50%. What about this one? The ether content is 66%. And what about this? This is a 33% ether content. As the ether content increases, the thermal property will be decreases. This is the highest ether content, as the lowest in the melting temperatures. And this is the lowest ether content, is the highest melting temperature. So the peak uh, has been used for many applications, such as aerospace and uh, applications. This PEK replaces metals in the airplanes. Also, this PEK can be used for automotive parts, gears, seals, sporting rings anti-lock uh, breaking systems like this, and a vacuum pump. And also, the PK can be used for electronic devices, switches, circuit board, and connectors, sensors, audio speakers. Particularly, PK is biocompatible, and therefore, PK can be used for medical applications here. So for example, spinal devices, 
orthopedic devices, trauma devices, neural cadres, pharmaceutical devices, etc. Now let's move on to polyether cell bones. This is also very really important engineering classics. PES, polyether cell bone, can be produced by using weak base such as alkali metal carbon as a catalyst in dipolar aprotic solvents such as dimethyl sulfoxide and n methyl pyridone and dimethyl acetamide. This dihydroxy diphenyl sulfone is reacted with dichloro diphenyl sulfones. So in the presence of alkali metal carbonate as a catalyst in an aprotic solvent to produce Polyether sulfone, ether sulfone. Poly this is polyether sulfone with the removal of alkaline chloride and water and carbon dioxide. Another method to synthesize polyether sulfone is that di uh, dichlorosulfone diphenyl ether reacted with uh, diphenyl ether. So, in the presence of a catalyst with the removal of hydrogen chloride to produce polyether sulfone. So there are several types of polyaryl ether sulfone. This is just we mentioned earlier, polyether sulfone, ether sulfone, ether sulfones. This polysulfone, so-called PSU, has been synthesized by reacting, this is bisphenol A, reacted with dichlorodiphenyl sulfone. Or polyphenylene sulfone has been synthesized by reactions dihydroxydiphenyl, biphenyl, reacted with dichlorodiphenyl sulfones. Now, when you compare these three types of polyaryl ether sulfones, the glass transition temperature PS is high, 220 degrees centigrade. So, however, see if you look at this property of PSU polysulfones, the glass transition temperature is a little lower than uh, this poly, uh, glass transition temperature PS. However, transparency of PSU is higher than polyether sulfones. So transparency is sometimes very important for practical applications. So polyaryl ethers, uh, polyaryl ether sulfones are generally amorphous, and the color of polyaryl ether sulfones are slightly yellow. In other words, the plastics show amber blue, amber hue, and the most of polyaryl ether sulfones are soluble in n methyl pyridones and dimethyl acetamide and pyridine and anoins. However, the polyaryl ether sulfones have many important, many uh, good properties. And they are transparent and rigid and tough. The glass transition temperature is very high, particularly the glass transition temperature PS is 220 degrees centigrade, which is much higher than glass transition temperature of PET and PBT and polyamide. And they also show long-term thermal oxidative endurance and very high temperature max thermal, thermal stability. And they also show low thermal expansion coefficient. In other words, mold shrinkage is relatively low. And they exhibit the resistance to hydrolysis and resistance to gas, the acidic and basic attack. And they also show good electrical insulating properties. And they are inherent to flame retardancies. They show resistance to oils and greases and excellent resistance to hydrogen burning solvent such as alcohols, glycols, and aliphatic amines. And therefore, polyether sulfones has many applications. For example, they can be used for food service and food processing. Coffee pots, you may use every day. Coffee maker components and microwavable bowls are made of PC, PS, right? And they can be used for plumbing components, such as faucet waterways, mixing valves, hot water, heat, uh, hot water heat, uh, heater components, distribution manifolds, and plumbing fits. Particularly, they can be used for membranes, for gas separation membranes, and reverse osmosis, and forward osmosis, nanofiltrations, and ultrafiltrations, and uh, macrofiltrations. So most of the separation membranes can be used for, uh, is made of polyether sulfones. So they also can be applied for the electrical and electronic components, such as high voltage 
transform uh, magnetic wires here and uh, printed circuit board and circuit breaker component and they can be used for uh, structural forms and high performance coating. Now let's move on alkyl substituted polyphenylene oxide, simply called PPO. Sometimes we may use polyphenylene ether that is abbreviated by PPE. So PPE is equal to PPO anyway. This PPO is synthesized by reaction of 2-methyl phenol with oxygen in the presence of catalyst and copper chloride in the pyridine solutions. Now this is the, the, the poly, para, uh, polyphenylene oxide. So this PPO is really the first example of polymerization by oxidative coupling reactions using oxygen as an oxidizing agent. So this uh, figure shows the polymerization mechanism of the dimethyl phenol by oxidative coupling. This is the monomer, it says dimethyl phenol, 2,6-dimethyl phenol. This monomer is oxidized by oxygen to produce this the monomer radical, so dimethyl phenol radical. This radical attack this monomer to produce intermediate and finally to give dimer. And this dimer is oxidized to produce dimer radical. This dimer radical attacked monomer radical to produce this intermediate and then finally to give tetrama. This dimer is oxidized again, is dimer radicals. This dimer radical attacked the dimer and to produce this intermediate finally to the monomer radical and trimer molecules, a trimer radical. And this reaction proceeds to make high molecular weight, the polyphenylene oxide. So this paper has many good properties. The glass transition temperature is very high, it's 280, 280 degrees centigrade. And this, is, this polymer is crystalline, and therefore the melting point is 257 degrees centigrade. This PPO is soluble in hydrogenated and aromatic solvent. And PPO shows the excellent electrical insulating properties, the exceptionally demanding stabilities, and they exhibit low thermal expansion. And therefore, the mold shrinkage is very low. They show low water absorption, a very good hydraulic stability, and good chemical resistance, and they show self extinguishing. However, the critical disadvantage of PPO is very expensive. And therefore, we need to blend with the cheaper plastics to reduce the, plas uh, the, plastic, uh, the cost of plastics. So that PPO has been used in the blender forms rather than PPO alone. So there are three types of PPO-based polymer blends. The first type of PPO-based polymer blend is PPO is blended with the styrene materials, particularly high-impact polystyrenes. That blend is called the styrenic PPOs. And PPO can be blended with polyamides. So the blend is named the polyamide PPOs. Also, the PPO can be blended with the PBT and PPS. So among these, styrene poly uh, PPOs has been commercialized and most widely used. So the PPO is miscible with the polystyrenes, and therefore the blend shows uniform morphology. And styrene PPOs have good dimensional stabilities, and therefore mold shrinkage is very low. And they show low water absorption, and therefore pre-drying pre -drying is not necessarily. And they show excellent resistance to hydrolysis. And the styling in PPOs show very good dielectric properties of a wide range of temperatures. And they show heat distortion temperatures as high as 160 degrees centigrade. Particularly, styling PPOs are cheaper than other super engineering plastics such as polycarbonate and polyphenylene sulfide and polyether sulfons. And they also show good melt thermal stability. 
So this PPO or as PPO blends has been used for many applications such as automotive industries. For example, instrumental panels looks like this one, and steering column claddings, and central consoles, loudspeaker housings, nozzles, etc. They can be used for electrical in industries such as cable connectors, bulb socket and switch cabinet, and fuse boxes and housings for small motors looks like this one, and the transformers and protective circuits. And they can be used for radio and television, such as coil formers, picture tube deflection yokes, insert card mountings, etc. Now, so we have we focus on polyphenylene sulfide, so-called PPS. Dichlorobenzene is reacted with sodium sulfide to produce polyphenylene sulfide as a simple reaction with the removal of sodium chloride. So PP has many good properties. PPS has highly crystalline. The melting point is about 285 to 295 degrees centigrade. The glass transition temperature of PPS is in the range of 85 to 150 degrees centigrade. And PPS shows good heat resistance and excellent frame resistance. The remitting oxygen index of PPS is 53. This 53 means that when the oxygen composition in the air is higher than 53%, and then the plastics just start to burn. In other words, so as you know, the oxygen content in the normal air is 20%, and therefore, PPS does not burn under the normal air conditions. In other words, the higher the limiting oxygen index, the better the flame resistance. So PPS shows an excellent chemical resistance, and electrical insulating characteristics, and the tensile properties of PPS is comparable to other engineering plastics. And PPS is easily filled by glass fiber and carbon fibers. And therefore, PPS can be used in the form of a composite rather than PPS alone. Composites are really of a commercial interest. And there are three types of composite. The first example, the first uh, the the composite is glass five reinforced plastics composite, in which in the 30 and 40 percent glass fibers are reinforced in PPS. And glass fibers, and particularly mineral reinforced composite, their composite shows the highest temperature ratings, good arc, and tracking resistance. And third, the most important, the composite is carbon fiber reinforced composite. These composites show high tensile strength and rigidity, improve EMI shielding, and steady electricity dissipation, and reduce the friction coefficient against the steel. And therefore, PPS or their composite has been used for many applications, such as electrical engineering part, and connectors, coil formers, and bobbins, and uh, thermal blocks, and motor housings, and switch components also can be used for mechanical engineering part, gear pumps, and gas valves, carburetor parts, and ignition plates, and flow control valves for heating systems. And also, they are used for cooking appliances, uh, sterilizable medical, dental, and general laboratory equipment, and hair dryer components. Now, this is the last subject of this lecture, polymides. Polymides are condensation polymers composed of organic residues linked via cyclimide groups. What is the cyclimide group? Is CO and HCO. This group is called imide group. Imide group is a cyclized here, and then this group is called cyclimide groups. These cyclimide groups are generally synthesized from reaction between organic diamines and organic tetracarboxylic acid. Polymides has many excellent properties. They show an exceptional the heat resistance, the excellent mechanical properties, high softening temperatures, excellent electrical properties, good solvent resistance, good frame resistance, 
So this is the uh, general chemical uh, uh, structure of polyamide. Here, R prime could be aliphatic or aromatic. Here, R must be cycloaliphatic or aromatic. So polyamides can be synthesized from polyamic acid precursors. In other words, the classical synthetic methods to prepare polyamides is a two-step process. In the, first step, in the first step, the anhydride is reacted with diamines to produce polyamic acid here. This is amide group. This is the carboxylic acid group. This group is called amic acid. This polyamic acid is soluble, and therefore it is processable. And then if you further increase the reaction temperatures, this amic acid is cyclized to form amide group. This is a polyamide. Now, this polyamide is not soluble in any solvent. Polyamide does not melt. And so, of course, you cannot process polyamide anymore. So in order to process polyamide, first, you must use polyamic ester solutions. For example, if you make polyamide films, first, you prepare polyamic acid, which is soluble in dimethyl acetamide, DMF, or NMP. This solution is cast on the plate, and then you evaporate the solvent by heating. At the same time, this amic acid is cyclized to form polyamide. Right? So after cyclization, you are never too able to process anymore. And this is the general schemes, more typical scheme of a synthesis of polyamide. This one is prime oxydiamylene, is reacted with pyrometallic dianhydride in a solvent of dimethyl acetamide to produce this polyamic acid. This is amide group linked to meta positions, this is para positions. Right? Now, if you further increase the reaction temperatures up to 300 degrees centigrade, and then this amic groups, amic, uh, the acid group is cyclized to form amide group. This is polyamide. So another method to prepare to synthesize polyamide is to use amide-imide exchange reactions. This is already polyamide, right? Cyclic polyamide. This imide is reacted with these diamines. These two mixtures are refluxed, refluxed in a NMP solutions, and to form this amic amide here. And then if you further increase the reaction temperatures up to 300 degrees centigrade, this Amide amide is a cyclized to form amide groups. This is a polyamide. This is not a pathway to prepare polyamide. In these cases, the ammonia is, is removed here. So in this case, this is a water is, uh, is removed. But uh, in this, in the uh, amide amide exchange reactions, amine, uh, I'm sorry, so ammonia gas is evolved. So this application on polyamides is very wide. Particularly, polyamides can be used for jet engines. Right, jet engines. In the jet engines, wear pairs and strips, thrust the washers, and bushings, and bearings, and bumpers, seals, and valve seats are made of polyamides. Also, polyamides can be used for electronics and information technology. So integrated circuit, for example, this is uh, the the uh, circuit is printed onto polyamide film. This is the, uh, the, uh, the integrated in the circuit and calculators and cameras, displays, printers and computers, and the flop discs, and this is tapes. So all of these, the applications is uh, successful when you use polyamides. Okay. So this is the end of lectures. Thank you very much for your attention.